world. Look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. This is the Wrestling Matters Podcast where we stand up for professional wrestling. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Because that's the bottom line. Go, go, oh, Wrestling Matters Podcast fans, it is me, me, H-E-A-D, back with you for episode 125 of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are well and whatever it is you're doing. I have had a very good week, quiet week. It was been my birthday this past week as well, so I'll get to that. I'll more on that later on. We'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end. Uh, yeah, today's show, ladies and gents, we're going to talk Raw, we're going to talk Smackdown. I'm going to talk, let me get this right, NXT, uh, the show, not the event, Ring of Honor, and TNA. No ICW this week. Hopefully it'll be back next week. And the reason why there's no ICW this week is because I have not one, but two top tens from what culture. That's right. All to do with SummerSlam. That's right. SummerSlam weekend. As this is going out on a Monday, you'd probably have seen SummerSlam. I know I have. Be sure to check out and look out for my review as well on SummerSlam, the podcast review. So be sure to look out for that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed SummerSlam. And also I hope you guys enjoyed NXT as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have two What Culture uh, Top 10s this week. One will be 10 most shocking SummerSlam moments of all time. And the other one will be 10 best SummerSlam matches of all time. All to do and all according to What Culture. Okay, so before you start busting my balls about this, no, it's all walk culture. So we'll review them later on. As a matter of fact, I'll review the first video in a little bit. But first of all, Wrestling Matters Podcast, episode 125. You can listen to this on Spreaker.com when I can get it up there. I've been busy lately, so I hopefully I'll be back up there this week. You can listen to it on SoundCloud.com for free and download it for free as well which is soundcloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast. Check it out on the YouTube channel as well, youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. Also check it out on the Swevton Network with Max Wrestling, uh, Sunday Segway, Offshoot Radio, and all the other great, beautiful people that are on there as well. I say beautiful people. Let's leave it there. Also, uh, check out Evan McCabe on the Max Wrestling Podcast. The reason why I say that is because I think he's packed in his own podcast now, so... I think he's still doing the Max Wrestling one, but his, his own little podcast that he was doing, I think he's packed that in now. So I, I, that's what I've heard. I might be wrong. But be sure to check them all out on the Swift Talk Network. Show them some love. And yeah, I'm always last on the Monday. So be sure to check me out each and every week on the Swift Talk Network, 9 o'clock UK time. And I believe that's 4 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to check that out. Also check out... Uh, Mystery Island as well Facebook.com forward slash back to the island 56 to 58 Oxton Road in Merseyside Birkenhead so be sure to check that out as well uh, I don't know who's coming next I'm pre- I hope you guys enjoyed Will Osprey as well hope you guys enjoyed all the other ones as well like Abyss and nah. so yeah check them all out I don't know who's coming next uh, I'll get some promotions this week and check it all out and do some research on it this week. And I'll give you more information on it next week on next week's podcast. So be sure to check that out. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I want to have a bit of apology. My CWC series, uh, Cruiserweight Classic series. I uploaded two episodes this week, episode five and six this week. Because I realized at the last minute that episode five had episode four's audio on there as well. How the hell... No one told me when they were, you know, when they were listening to it on whether it was on YouTube or downloading it for free on SoundCloud is a mystery to me. But I uploaded them both this week, so they're both up on the part on on the channel, the YouTube channel, and downloaded for free on SoundCloud as well. 
So it'll be back to normal this week. I deeply apologize for that. I don't know how that happened. I swear I put episode five's audio in. But anyway, be sure to check that all out as well. CWC, WCPW, all exclusive to the YouTube channel. If you want to listen to them, check them out on the YouTube channel or check them out on SoundCloud. They're exclusive to them too and them too only as well. And we're not far away from being done in terms of the CWC uh, podcast as well because that will not last very much longer as well. All the episodes will still be on the channel, but that series is coming to an end, so be sure to check that out as well. Also check out my preview of SummerSlam also on the channel as well and NXT as well, NXT predictions for TakeOver Brooklyn 2. Be sure to check the podcast out for the reviews as well. I'm thinking of doing them both together. I probably have done them both together. I don't know yet. I haven't made my mind up as I'm recording this. I'm recording this on the Saturday, this part on the Saturday. So I'm still pondering that. Either way, they're going to be up at some point anyway, both reviews. So be sure to check that out as well. And right, ladies and gents, with all that being said, all them beautiful promotions out the way and the apologies and the things I need to get out of the way. <coughs> let's get to the 10 most shocking moments all time. According to what culture? Now, this is the first of two top tens this week on the podcast. According to what culture? That's why I've had to make quick for ICW. There hasn't been really much ICW anyway. The public, um, all I know is 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 uh, Friday Night Fight Club's coming back, so that will be back on the podcast when it returns. But this is all about SummerSlam. This podcast, it is SummerSlam hype, if you can say that. And we joined Jack the Jobber, who's running this countdown down and number 10 is the SummerSlam 88 main event with the Mega Powers and the Mega Bucks and the situation where Miss Elizabeth ripped the dress off like she like she was a part of the, the Eurovision Song Contest and had a nice little reveal underneath distracting I believe it was DiBiase and, uh, and co if you will including Jesse Ventura the referee but it helped because it allowed the Mega Powers to get the victory in the match. And that was the very first main event of SummerSlam. The Mega Powers meet the Mega Bucks, as they were called. Yeah, number nine, ladies and gents. Number nine is the Summer of Punk comes to a set in. Now, what it means by that, ladies and gentlemen, because it was the Summer of Punk, WWE's version of Summer of Punk, WWE style anyway, because it all went in, the pipe bomb, and all led to the match, the memorable match between him and John Cena, CM Punk and John Cena at uh, Money in the Bank, and then it all led to SummerSlam, where Triple H was the referee, champion versus champion, WWE champion versus WWE champion, and CM Punk manages to get the win, controversial, but he got the win nonetheless, and then out of nowhere, Kevin Nash returns, clotheslines CM Punk, and then Alberto catches in. Yeah. Beautiful way, and I use that term loosely, to end the summer of punk. Stupid, if you ask me. But we got some good moments out of that anyway, in terms of Kevin CM Punk owning Kevin Nash, you know, and so on. We'll move on. Number eight. Number eight, ladies and gents, is Paul Bear turns on the other ticket. Now, this was 1996, is Brawl, the Boiler Room Brawl match and whoever retrieved the urn got to use it and Paul Bear had out of the urn. Undertaker wanted the urn but Paul didn't give it to him. He gave it to him but in a different way because you whacked him over the head with it costing him the match and obviously at that point Paul Bear turns on the Undertaker and goes off with Mankind and that was a memorable match in its own right for that point. The next one is Team WWE versus Team Nexus. Now a shocking moment of this, I'm guessing what, what coach we're talking about, is the fact that Daniel Bryan was the mystery partner of Team WWE. Considering what happened with him, with his Justin Roberts choking thing and him getting fired for it. Yeah, it being, the whole match was a mess for me. It was a great match, but it, Daniel Bryan really proved himself in this match, in my opinion. But uh, the ending was poor, though. The ending was very poor, indeed. Because, as we all know right now, bonehead move, it should have been... The Nexus winning it. But hey. And yes, we had heel Michael Cole a commentary. Oh, God. I mean, anything Michael Cole is annoying. 
And you guys all know that. You're not stupid. In any event, moving on. The next one after that, up next rather, is Ultimate Warrior. That's right. Ultimate Warrior becoming the Intercontinental Champion. Now, this was back in 1988, the very first SummerSlam, ladies and gents. And Honky was supposed to defend the Intercontinental Championship against Beefcake, if I remember correctly. But Beefcake had an injury. So Honky assumed that he was going to have the night off and everything. So, But he had a mystery opponent. It turned out to be the Warrior. And the Warrior beat Honky and ended his, I believe it was his two-year title reign. And... Uh, he ended his two-year title reign and became the Intercontinental Champion, which obviously helped the Warrior built in towards the WWE title, which he eventually won at WrestleMania VI in Toronto, one of Hulk Hogan's worst places to have a match. Because I don't think in all the matches that he's had in Canada, I have never think he has ever won a match in Canada. That's just my opinion on that one. That's just my assumption on it. The next one is Shane McMahon's fall. And I believe this was the fall that he had when he faced Steve Blackman at uh, SummerSlam 2000, where he climbed up the scaffold the, in the entrance ramp. Blackman whacked him a couple of times with a kendo stick, and then all you see is just Shane falling back onto the staging area. Not quite deftifying. It was shocking. There's no question about that. But not quite deftifying as some of the stunts or some of the stuff that Shane did after that. I mean, there was the... The fall, the elbow drop from the top of the of that uh, to Big Show at Backlash 2001, which was more crazy. But uh, yeah, in any event, it was still shocking and it also didn't help matters that Blackman actually did a diving elbow from that same position when Shane fell. That didn't help at all. Anyway, <clears throat> next, Randy Orton catches in his Money in the Bank contract. Now, I don't know if this was shocking, to be honest with you. It was shocking, but I didn't expect what happened. I think the shocking part of this mat of this whole thing was the fact that Triple H turned on Brian. I think that must have been the shocking part. And then this was what built the whole authority angle, which died out and got watered down more than the NWO. I was done with it. I mean, the whole authority angle, the whole authority thing should have just ended at Survivor Series where Sting made his debut, quite frankly, but it didn't. And like I've said many times on the podcast, I can understand why they brought them back because they wanted Triple H versus Sting at WrestleMania and they got it. Why, I don't know, but they got it. But in any event, I think that is what the shocking part was for me, Triple H turning on Brian. I might be wrong, but you'll have your say on that one as well. Now, next one is Shawn Michaels, Mox Hulk Hogan. This was the whole build-up to the 2005 birthday weekend that I will never forget, ladies and gentlemen. It was Hulk Hogan, one dream match. Like I've, like I've got this, like I've had this weekend as well. You know, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton. This was a dream match for me as well. Hulk Hogan in 2005 went one on one with Shawn Michaels. The whole thing started when Shawn turned on him in the tag match, at the end of the tag match. But I think Shawn, Hogan pissed Shawn off in this match. And it got to the point where he ended up mocking him the whole match. Just overselling matches, overselling moves rather, leg drops and everything else in between. Because the whole plan for this whole deal was for more matches, like a series of matches, but Hogan only wanted to do one match. And Hogan wanted and insisted on Shawn Michaels playing the heel. Yeah. Next one is, I don't know if this was shocking, but it was damn sure fun to watch if you were, if you were seen a hater and all that. The destruction of Superman. That's right. Superman WWE. Apparently, John Cena is human. Because when he walked into, I believe it was the 2014 uh, World Championship title defense he had with Brock Lesnar, Eat, Sleep, Conquer, Repeat. It was more like Eat, Sleep, Suplex City. Yeah, or Eat, Sleep, Suplex John City. John Cena, rather. I mean, good God. He just destroyed him from start to finish. It was basically the destruction of John Cena. That's what it was. That SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar suplexing him. It was the debut of Suplex City, even though that kind of debuted at WrestleMania that year against Roman Reigns, but it went to a new level at SummerSlam. And that SummerSlam will be forever known as the night John Cena got his ass whooped and the destruction of what people call Superman. And I'm guessing this, that was number two, and I'm guessing this is number one. The most shocking moment is Owen Hart breaking Steve Austin's neck. Now, this was in 97's SummerSlam. The Tombstone, Piledriver, which broke Steve, 
neck and it was just it shortened his shortened steve's career it shortened his tenure killed his momentum at that point anyway it killed his momentum at that point because he was on fire at that point and he still manages to get you know and be on fire still but not in where he wanted to be. And, you know, it all led to the raising hell and, you know, you know the anger that he caused at Ground Zero when he stunned a JR and handed in the tag belts, all leading up to his revenge at Survivor Series when he beat Austin, when he beat Owen for the uh, Intercontinental Championship at Survivor Series, only to forfeit it. I don't think he did forfeit it. He had a month reign with it because he faced the rock at DX in your house. And then the following night after DX in your house, he forfeited it. Also, he manages to win the Intercontinental Championship anyway, despite having this broken neck at SummerSlam with what he's dubbed the worst pin in the history of pins. Yeah. But it is a shocking moment. And I don't think, I mean, people used to say that to me. Oh, it was fake and everything. Yeah, and he was put on and everything. You don't break your neck and fake it, ladies and gentlemen. I've never broken my neck, thank God, but injuries like that are not fake, believe you me. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is wraps up that countdown, the first of two countdowns in this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll be back right after this with part two, and it's going to be the Raw and SmackDown retrospective review, whatever you want to look at. So I'll be back with that, and then I'll be back in part three with NXT and Ring of Honor. Part four will be TNA, plus a few other things. And then the final part will be part two of the top ten war culture as well. So stay tuned. We've got a lot to get through in this podcast. See you in a bit. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show your support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Now it's time for the Raw and SmackDown reviews. That's right. Raw and SmackDown. Good Raw-ish. A bit boring though. I would tell, I would probably say average. Yeah, that would be a better term for it. And I'll explain the reasons why in a sec. First of all, I'll run through the quick hits. I'll go through the quick hits. Uh, United States champion Rusev demanded an apology from Roman Reigns and got it. Somewhat. Sami Zayn and Sheamus went one-on-one. By the way, Rusev and Reigns ended up in a match later on in the evening. I'll get to that in a second. Like I said, Sami Zayn beat Sheamus... The Tag Champs, New Day beat the, new, beat the Dudley Boys. Nia Jax's development continues, and she beats Rachel Levy. I hope I, spelled that, hope I said that right. Heath Slater he has the audacity to confront Brock Lesnar. Big Cast defeats Kevin Owens by DQ. The Shining Stars beat the Primetime Players. I'll get to that in a second. Neville beats the returning Jinder Mahal. Seth Rollins calls out, calls out the Demon King, which is Finn Balor. Charlotte defeats Alicia Fox. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson beat the Golden Goof at uh, Truth. And Roman Reigns defeats Rusev in a match. Now, I'll get to Shining Stars and Primetime Players. How the hell did they come back together for that match? They had this big, huge feud topping one another. Primetime Players facing each other, and then Titus O'Neil says something derogatory to Bob Backlund, Darren Young attacks him and beats the hell out of him backstage. Basically, they've been feuding. And then somebody came up with this idea, oh yeah, we'll put them back together for one night, and have Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, and even Bob Backlund in a minute doing the millions of dollars dance. Next minute, one mistake, obviously Titus thought it was Darren Young, which it wasn't, and Titus jumps down young and walks away. Could somebody explain to me what the hell the point of that was, please? If anybody's listening to this podcast, get me up at WM Podcast or write in the comments below if you're watching this, listen to this on YouTube. What the hell was that all about? And why did that take place? There was a better way to book that f- match or to book that rivalry, feud, whatever you want to call it. Putting them back together, bad idea. It was, it was pointless. And like WhatCulture.com said, it was definitely one of the downs of of the uh, whole Raw, and it made no sense. Rusev was scheduled to defend the United States title against Roman Reigns, but they couldn't wait that long, so I thought, oh yeah, best off, let's put him in the uh, 
in a match with Roman Reigns on Raw, non-title. Basically, you just gave away the SummerSlam match for free. The only difference was it wasn't for the United States title. And I believe Roman Reigns won, yep. Yeah. Roman Reigns beat him. I'm not going to say, because you probably all know what happened on SummerSlam, but I think that was probably the, the ending that gave it away, quite frankly, depending on what happens. Like I say, you all know what happened at SummerSlam. I'm not going to reveal any spoilers, but that was another pointless mistake. The best moment of Raw, for me, oh yeah, don't forget, Seth Rollins called out the Demon King, which was Finn Balor, and we saw... The debut of Finn Balor dressed up in his paint thing. Quite frankly, they should have left that for SummerSlam. That's just my opinion on that one. Now for the best moment of the night. Brock Lesnar comes out preparing and promoting his match with Randy Orton at SummerSlam. And just as Paul Heyman is about to speak, Heath Slater walks out and confronts Brock Lesnar. And Heath says he needs to sign, he needs to talk about his, you know, feed his kids, yada, yada, yada. Brock Lesnar basically went up to him and went, I don't give a shit about your kids. Now, I read the dirt sheets after that during the week, and they said, oh, he went off script and everything. I don't think Brock Lesnar goes off script, to be honest. I don't think that was on the script, but Brock Les did Brock Lesnar need to go off script? Seriously? I don't think so. And, uh, yeah, Brock gave him two choices, to walk away or to keep pissing him off to the point where he gets a beaten. And Heath Slater, being the dumbass that he is, chose option two. And took a beating and took a trip to Suplex City. And for Brock's sake, at least, hopefully Randy Orton was watching that. But all in all, a very average Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. Yeah. Not a very good goal in show to SummerSlam. Just my view on that one. And as we say that, ladies and gents, it is now time for SummerSlam. And um, not SummerSlam. Smackdown, rather. Leading into SummerSlam. I've got SummerSlam on my mind because it's a SummerSlam it's a SummerSlam podcast today, guys. So, so allow it. Anywho, the SmackDown quick hits were Ambrose and Ziggler heat up on Miss TV five days before SummerSlam, and it gets to the point where Ziggler sends a message to Ambrose by kicking his head off and saying that at SummerSlam you will realize how good I am. 12 man tag saw American Alpha, Usos, and the Hype Bros defeat Breezango, Vaude Villains, and the Ascension. Eva Marie and Naomi ended in an old contest, and I'll get to that again in a second. Heath Slater defeated Randy Orton via disqualification. I don't think Randy Orton was really bothered, and I'm guessing this means now Heath Slater's on SmackDown, because he got a contract. Ambrose beats Eric Rowan. Becky Lynch and Carmella defeat Natalia and Alexa Bliss, and John Cena beats Alberto Del Rio, and after the match, AJ Styles tries to attack John Cena, does a good job of it, but then gets attitude adjustment through a table. Now for the points, and yes, I'm going to talk about even Marie again. Week one, she, had, she fakes a leg injury. Week two, she, f she has a wardrobe malfunction. And week three, apparently she was running late. Okay. And I called it last week, guys, on the podcast. If you listen to the podcast last week, I called it. She got a match at SummerSlam. Yeah, I, I called it, didn't I? I called it, didn't I? She got a match at SummerSlam. That was until she violated the wellness policy, which, to be honest with you, I'm actually happy about. Yes, Paige and Roman Reigns and Alberto Del Rio, it now seems, have done that. That's a different matter. Okay. That's an entirely different matter. But I'm actually glad Eva Marie broke the wellness policy. I'm actually glad about that. That is the one one I'm glad about. Because she doesn't even deserve to be in the freaking WWE, let alone on a SummerSlam card. And it was just flat out ridiculous. I mean, what is the point of that? Seriously? What is the point of that? Oh, God, Eva Marie is a joke, quite frankly. An absolute joke. I can't take her seriously. And from the looks of it, I probably never will. Ambrose and Ziggler heat up, like I say, to the point where Ziggler kicked his head off. Ambrose's head off and said, you will know that I am that damn good. Maybe people are right, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe it's now getting to the point where you've, got, you've had the heartbreak kid and now you've got HBZ. Heartbreak Ziggler, if you will. But, hey, it's working for him and he can lay the super kicks in, no doubt. Not as good as Shawn Michaels, but that's a different matter. 
and another story for another day. But during the commercial break of that, and apparently SmackDown is turning into Raw in terms of commercial break, no doubt that was probably on that WWE app, no doubt. But anyway, it seems that Miz got confronted by Apollo Crews, or as he liked to call him, Apollo Creed, or whatever the heck it was. And Apollo Crews came out and made a statement on Miz leading into their Intercontinental Championship match. And like I say, guys, if you saw SummerSlam, you know what happened. But, uh, yeah, what is wrong? And also, before I wrap this up, guys, what is wrong with WWE at the moment in terms of wellness policies? Like I say, Eva Marie's broken the wellness policy. I get that. I'm happy about that. But now you've had Roman Reigns, and now you've got Alberto Del Rio and Paige, the real-life couple. Something's not going well in the terms of WWE behind the scenes when it comes to their wellness policies. Okay. Something's not quite right on that. And it also is rumoured that Alberto Del Rio may leave WWE again when his clock and his contract runs out again. Because apparently, according to w w WTTV News, Russell Talk Television, apparently he's not happy with the position that he's in. You know, I'll leave you guys to debate on that one and give your opinions on that. But apparently he's not happy with the position he's in. So we'll see how that pans out. But all in all, guys... An average lackluster Raw, especially for a going show to SummerSlam, and an okay Summer, an okay SmackDown, quite frankly. Very okay SmackDown indeed. Uh, in my opinion, SmackDown was better than Raw this week. All in all, guys, that about wraps up for part two. I'll be back in part three with more on the Wrestling Manners podcast, so stay tuned. There's only one wrestling podcast that gives you honest, uncut opinions and the most unique trivia since WWE did the weakest link. And the only place you can hear the show stealing podcast promo every single week. Covering WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground. Max Wrestling Podcast is the place for you. Join myself, Evan Money McCabe, the Phoenix, and the Butcher. Sundays at 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern time with your host, Danny Dave, to sleep on VOC Nation and the Swerve Talk Network. Go to maxwrestling.wix.com slash maxwrestling or follow us at Max Wrestling UK for more details. Give it to the Max. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. Woo! They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Now, I won't talk about NXT too much. I'll mention it in this, in this part as well, like I always do. But I won't talk about it too much. I want to talk about Ring of Honor. Now, Leo Rush and Donovan Dat Jack, this was the last one going into, the last show going into the Death Before There's Honor pay-per-view. Leo Rush and Donovan Dijak had a hell of a match to kick off the show. Very back and forth. Big, tall guy against a small guy. Uh, Leo Rush being the prospect winner and Donovan Dijak being a former prospect winner in his own right. And back and forth stuff. Great stuff. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And one mistake from Dijak gets him the victory. Gets him the loss, rather, and Leo Rush manages to get the victory. And then all hell broke loose after the match, which all led to a four-way number one contenders match for the uh, Ring of Honor World Television title. Great stuff, though. Very good stuff, indeed. Also, the main thing. After what happened with Jay Lethal, as well, and the contract signing involving him and Adam Cole for their title match. Now, there was back-and-forth stuff, back-and-forth you know, argument, and as Adam Cole was about to take the pen and write his contract, uh, Jay already signed it at this point, he was about to sign his deal to uh, to make the match official, Jay Lethal decided to put a pair of scissors next to him, and Adam looked like he saw a ghost, 
and then all hell broke loose, a brawl ensued, and Jay Lethal was basically looking for revenge and came very close to cutting Adam Cole's hair if it hadn't been for the Young Bucks. So the Young Bucks manages to save Adam Cole at that point, but Jay Lethal was playing no games. Speaking of the Young Bucks, it was meant to be a tag team match involving the Addiction, War Machine, and Motor City Machine Guns for the tag belts. However, War Machine got jumped in the back earlier that day and Motor City Machine Guns were injured. So basically, Nigel didn't make the match, so basically he ended up you know, making a number one contenders match instead because Rapangi Vice and the Young Bucks wanted the crack. And they were looking to make it a three-way dance to replace War Machine and Motor City Machine Guns. But Nigel didn't make the match. He made a number one contenders match involving Rapangi Vice and the Young Bucks, which the Young Bucks won. And in two weeks on Ring of Honor television, the Young Bucks get a Ring of Honor World Tag Team title shot. So you all know what happened at Death Before Dishonor if you listen to this pay- at this podcast. Question is, can Young Bucks become the tag team champions? I guess we'll see in two weeks. Now for the NXT. Now, nothing really big happened on NXT this week. The NXT champion, Samoa Joe and Nakamura's interview was cut short. They got into an argument. Obviously, you knew it was going to go down. Carmella, Liv Morgan and Nikki Glencross defeat Alexia Bliss, Mandy Rose and uh, Dara. It's NXT Women's Division, ladies and gentlemen. I've never really seen that Daria uh, wrestle. So that's a first for me. Uh, Ember Moon and Billy Kay's match was made for the NXT TakeOver, which you probably already know about. And if you listen to my review show, look out for that as well. And Hideo Itami beat Mustafa Ali as well. So really nothing much to say, guys, on NXT. All in all, it is what it is at the end of the day. So hope you guys enjoyed Ring of Honor. Hope you guys enjoyed Death Before Dishonor as well. And, uh, yeah, I have seen the results. I've seen what happened. I have to say, the main event shocked me. The others uh, didn't, quite frankly. There was a few other matches on there that didn't shock me, to be honest with you. I think the only thing that shocked me out of the whole show, from what I saw and what I read, was the main event. Other than that, nothing really much to say about it, to be honest. But all in all, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this part, and I'll be back in part four, ladies and gentlemen, with TNA and a few other things as well, so stay tuned. If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast now on Twitter, at WM Podcast, for all professional wrestling news. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back to part four of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys are enjoying the podcast so far. I'm going to talk TNA in this podcast as well, but I just want to give a quick mention. Legends of JB, uh, or Legends with JBL, that is, this past week. Interview with Sting as well. And I'll talk about this as well, just to fill in for ICW, because ICW will be back next week, I hope, as well. Uh, yeah, credit to JBL. Never thought I'd say that in a sentence, but credit to JBL. He asked the hard hitting questions whether or not, you know, what happened, happened, you know, did Bischoff do this and this and everything. It is worth the watch. He hits the hard-hitting questions. He talks about 97's uh, match with Hogan at Starcade. He talks about the match, you know, with Flair in 90 as well. All this stuff, all behind-the-scenes stuff with uh, WCW, you know, what, what happened when he got injured with his match with Seth Rollins at Night of Champions as well uh yeah just a lot of stuff as well how he be you know how he accepted jesus christ into his life and everything it's really really good and it's rec- and it's worth recommending the watch and you need to see this as well guys because jbl throws a question at him saying that i think deep down that you still want that match with the undertaker sting turned around and basically just says yes he does he doesn't want to go out, and, what, and this is from what I got from the actual, from watching it, guys. He doesn't want to go out in the way he did, you know, going out with that injury. What the fuck happened? I don't know, but he says that Seth wasn't to blame for what happened or anything like that. 
But uh, yeah, he doesn't want to go out that way. So as we all know right now, he's retired. He retired at the Hall of Fame. He announced he was leaving, blah, blah, blah. But there's a possible way he may come back. Yeah, I don't think he's had the surgery. I don't think he said he didn't have the surgery. And I think it's he's holding out for that one more moment just to be able to say he can go out in a positive way and not go out where Seth Rollins way the Seth Rollins match that he had at Night of Champions not go out that way he doesn't want to go out like that so maybe he's holding out for that match with Undertaker at Wrestlemania and um, whether that will happen or not I've basically given up on that a long time ago but maybe he wants maybe Sting wants to do that to give back to the fans because every wrestling fan still wants to see that match no matter what Sting versus Undertaker depending on how the condition is of the Undertaker of course but everybody still wants to see that match, no matter what. I mean, if you, I mean, I basically, like I said, I basically given up on it a long time ago. But if you ask any wrestling fans, say, "Oh, which you want to see that match?" Though they'll, they'll probably turn around and say yes. And if a majority of them say no, they're either full of shit or they're lying to you. And I think Sting's got to the point right now where he wants to give this. He wants to have this match with Undertaker just to give back to the fans, just to be able to say, "Here." That's my way of saying thank you. You got what you wanted. Boom. And then we're right off to the sunset. You know, the proper way he wanted to do. But, like I say, guys, it's worth the watch. Uh, if you have a minute, if you have a minute, subscribe to the network. Go and find it. It's no doubt it'll be on YouTube at some point. I don't know, somewhere about. some Somebody will have it on the internet. But go and find it. I highly recommend it. And... Enjoy it, man, because it is really, 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 really good watch. And I'm looking forward to the other episodes of this new season with uh, with the JB with uh, Legends with JBL because he's got he's got Bruno San Martino, Stan Hansen, Alondra Blaze, uh, Medusa, and the Outsiders. Outsiders, Alondra Blaze is, should be very interesting considering the WCW thing. Stan Hansen and San Martino is a different matter, though. But still very interesting nonetheless. And I'm very much, very much looking forward to that. No doubt about that. So with that being said, guys, I'll leave that there. And let's move on to TNA. Now, I'm not going to talk about TNA too much because... <coughs> I don't know what the hell they're playing at, quite frankly. All I will say is this. Bobby Lashley and Aaron Rex, Damien Sandell... Had a little meeting backstage, face to face. No words were said. Also, ladies and gentlemen, James Storm has been suspended by Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling president now, Billy Corgan. Yes, if you've heard the news during the week, guys, Billy Corgan is now being, I think it's been promoted to Impact president. And uh, Dixie Carter is now the chairman or the chairwoman of uh, Impact Wrestling as well. So there's been a lot of changes going about. Suspended, James Storm gets escorted out of the building. Moose beats Eddie Edwards thanks to Mike Bennett. Uh, Maria Canales throws her weight around or whatever weight she has. Gail Kim defeats Jay by disqualification. Lashley insults the X Division. DJZ, uh, Rockstar Spud, Mandrews and Braxton Sutter go for a four-way dance. And DJZ wins that match. I'm no doubting he'll get he'll be the next in line to fight Lashley. Uh, Impact president Billy Corgan and Chairman Dixie Carter have have a little discussion backstage of how to get the belt off Lashley because Lashley has all three belts now. EC3 and Drew Galloway are ready to fight, but they have a little bit of an obstacle in there now. Yeah, they have a little bit of an obstacle in their match, their upcoming match, because very soon it's going to be. Drew Galloway, EC3, winner gets first crack or gets a crack at the World Championship, a bound for glory, and the wild card in the match is Aaron Rex is the special guest referee, Damien Sandow. So it is what it is. And I'm very much looking forward to that match. I'm very much looking forward to them two going at it because they've been practically mates in Evolve as well because EC3's been over to Evolve to help him out, help Drew Galloway out as well. So interesting things. Eli Drake beats Shearer. Yes, Shearer's back. And uh, Lashley's historic making moment. I'll check down in a second. 
and the broken hotties as the now no for fuck's sake the broken hotties not the hottie boys the broken hotties versus the bromains versus helms destiny versus tribunal for the number one contenders the winners get a tag team title shot and yes the broken hotties and now the number one contenders for the world tag team titles what a joy absolute joy bobby lashley came out this week on impact as well and basically disrespected impact or what's left of it corgan and carter were right in front of them and he basically took both belts and i'm talking about x division and king of the mountain and threw them down making a point much to the chagrin of dixie carter and now tna president T billy corgan or impact president whatever the fuck they call themselves and them two have forced lashley that it'll be an open invitational battle royal winner gets a shot lashley <laughs> Oh boy, TNA ladies and gentlemen, a far shallow from his former self, and God help TNA if Broken Hardys become the tag team champions, that's all I'm saying. With that being said guys, I'm going to take a time out of here and just bang my head against the brick wall and I'll be back right after this quick time out with the final part of the Wrestling Matters podcast and part two of my top tens from wall culture so see you in a bit be sure to check out the wrestling matters channel at www.youtube.com forward slash ajw wrestling matters for my exclusive review series that i'm doing on wcpw what culture pro wrestling brought to you by the good folks at whatculture.com each and every week i'll be reviewing their shows whether it's loaded or their big upcoming shows as well each and every week on their youtube channel be sure to check out the wrestling matters channel for review shows each and every week you can also download them for free on soundcloud wrestling matters wrestling fans be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final part of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you guys have enjoyed the podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end with these few promotions. Quick reminders, guys. Swerve Talk Network, you can listen to this podcast on the Swerve Talk Network, along with Max Wrestling, Evan McCabe on Max Wrestling, Offshoot Radio and Sunday Segway each and every week. Check it out. All the links should be in the description below if you're seeing this on YouTube, SoundCloud, and even the Swift Hunt Network as well. So be sure to check all that out as well. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the shows. And enjoy the great quality entertainment. Max Wrestling is led by Daz and Craig Phoenix. Offshoot is James Belmont and co. Kenny runs the Sunday Segway. And I run the Wrestling Matters podcast. That's right. I don't want to have it any other way. Also, check out Mystery Island, guys. Like I say, facebook.com forward slash back to the island. I will have more information on who's coming to the Mystery Island next week. That I can promise you. So be sure to check it out. 56 to 58 Oxton Road in Birkenhead. Be sure to check it all out. If you're in the area, get yourself down there and get a look at the quality goodness. And also check out their Mystery Island podcast as well, which you can check out on Spreaker.com. Now, now, ladies and gents, boys and girls, children of all ages, be sure to check out all the extra podcasts as well, the WCPW, CWC, and the reviews for the SummerSlam and NXT Brooklyn as well. So be sure to check all of that out. That will be all this week on the Wrestling Matters channel. YouTube.com forward slash wrestling forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. So be sure to check all that out and subscribe to the channel. Now, ladies and gents, it is now time for the main event. It's time for part two. Part two of this double what culture 
top 10. We had one earlier on in part one. And now we've got the main event in part two, which is 10 best SummerSlam matches of all time. Now, obviously, it's all war culture. So be sure to check them out. All the links to them should be in the description below. If they're not, I'll put them in there, but they should be. And number 10, we kick off with this, is a match from SummerSlam 02, which saw Rey Mysterio and Kurt Angle. And probably one of the best opening matches in pay-per-view history. Dare I say one of the best matches in SummerSlam's history too. It was the night Rock beat Rock got beat by Brock Lesnar for the Undisputed title. Great way to kick off. This is how it should be in all pay-per-view matches, quite frankly. But uh, the only thing I disagree with is the fact that this was Rey Mysterio's first big pay-per-view match in WWE at that point, and he lost. But anyway, it was still a great match nonetheless, and a perfect way to kick off SummerSlam 02. Number nine is Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Now, taking nothing away from what happened after it, where Triple H turned on Bryan and cost him the WWE Championship, the match itself was good. And this is what John Cena is about, in a way. Because John Cena has great matches with CM Punk. He had a great matches with Daniel Bryan as well. You know, and that's what happens. You know, taking away, like I said, taking away nothing from that crap afterwards that spoilt the match, it spoilt the, the flair of it, but Daniel Bryan won cleanly and became the champion. That was until Triple H pedigreed him, which all led to WrestleMania. And the authority watered down angle, which was more watered down than probably the NWO angle turned out to be. Anyway, number eight, Rock and Triple H. This was from 1998. One of many great matches these two had in this great rivalry. One was leading DX, the other one was leading The Nation. One was Intercontinental Champion, and the other one walked out of, Inter of SummerSlam, the Intercontinental Champion. It was a ladder match, and I remember this very well. Highway to Hell, great match. The wrong belt, the wrong Intercontinental title belt. As well, but it's still the Intercontinental Championship nonetheless. And thanks to a little bit of help from China with the low blow on the rock, Triple H won the belt and walked out the champion. Which was a great it was a great match all the way around. And yeah, and quite frankly, in my opinion, it stole the show of that pay-per-view. Number seven was Kurt Angle against Stone Cold Steve Austin, taken from SummerSlam 2001 which took place on my birthday. Yay! And uh, it saw Kurt Angle, a babyface Kurt Angle, representing the WWF against Stone Cold, who was representing the Alliance, who was the WWF champion at the time. And these two took it to each other, but the only thing that spoiled the match <coughs> was the ending for me. Which all led into Unforgiven, where Kurt Angle eventually won the title. That, and plus other reasons as well. But it was still a great match nonetheless. But the ending of that match kind of tarnished it a little bit. But still a great match. It's still a match I'd probably watch this day. Uh, I'm guessing this is number six. Bret Hart versus Owen. I would have put this in the top five, quite frankly. But hey, I'm not what culture. Bret Hart, Owen Hart from SummerSlam 1994 in the Steel Cage match. Just perfection, quite frankly. This was, I guess you could say this was Brett's revenge match because at, at WrestleMania 10, Owen beat Brett. So, and, and then it was all tarnished, that victory anyway, because Brett won the title later on in the evening, which all eventually led to this steel cage match at SummerSlam. You know, the Anvil getting involved on Owen's behalf, on Owen's you know, behalf and everything, and Bulldog getting involved. It was just complete chaos. But it was well done. Number five was another rematch from WrestleMania 10, I believe. The Intercontinental Championship match at SummerSlam. I'm guessing it was 94 SummerSlam involving... It was a rematch anyway. And it was the match where, I believe it was the night where Diesel fought Mabel for the ten. No, it was ninety five. There you go. It was the night uh, Shawn Michaels went one on one with Razor for the Intercontinental Championship. Ladder match. It was a rematch from WrestleMania ten, and it was I think a beauty. Which one was best? You decide. 
Number five was Brock and CM Punk. SummerSlam match. Do I agree with this? Yeah, I do, actually. <coughs> but uh, Brock had many great matches in SummerSlam. He had a great match with Triple H. He had a great match with The Rock. But this one was just a full-blown fight, quite frankly. A full-blown fight. And perfect build-up, beautifully build-up. Two best friends really going at it, which was Heyman and Punk. And then the Beast was stuck in the middle of it on Heyman's behalf. And it was just a full-blown fight. And I loved it. Very much so. And I th Brock managed to come out with a victory. The next one, which was number four. I believe it was number four. In the countdown. Brett and Mr. Perfect from SummerSlam 1991. This was... The probably my, my favorite SummerSlam match ever and it was a very special SummerSlam to me because not only was it my very first SummerSlam I ever saw on pay-per-view it was my very first wrestling pay-per-view ever and it all built up Perfect won the title one year be, uh, before in a tournament and he beat uh, he beat um, what I call it by the way that was number three but this is number three by the way he beat uh, Tito Santana and then he lost it to Texas Tornado at SummerSlam 90. A couple of weeks later, I think, he got it back from uh, Texas Tornado, which led into the Texas Tornado DBRC feud. And then he had a good long run with it leading into SummerSlam 1991, where he eventually lost. And if you haven't seen that match, I recommend you go and watch it. Go watch it, go and check it out, and go and find it because it is worth the watch. No doubt about it. I'm guessing this is number two then, so if that was number three, number two's greatest match or best SummerSlam matches of all time according to the world culture was Shawn Michaels' in-ring return at SummerSlam 02 against his best friend Triple H in that fight, that non sanction fight. And it's hard to argue, really, because everybody thought going into the mismatch that Shawn Michaels was done. Would he be able to hang with Triple H? Would he be able to fight? You know, is it, will his back play a part in the match? And Shawn Michaels never missed a beat, quite frankly. I mean, I think Shawn's one of them wrestlers he can have four years off again and he'd still come back and, you know, be the man he was. And that was a great feud anyway because it all led into a Hell in a Cell match. And which Triple H eventually won, and but... It will all be remembered for that match because pr Sean proved the point that night to the critics as well. That people, I mean, there was a lot of people going into that thinking, oh, he wasn't going to make to hang and or be around or anything like that. But he got it, and credit to him for that as well. Now, also, ladies and gentlemen, number one is the greatest match, best match in SummerSlam's history, and it was. Brett and Bulldog from 92. That's right. Brett and British Bulldog from 1992. In a pay-per-view that I believe was recorded, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was recorded from what I heard. I only heard that once. But either way, it was still worth the watch. Brett Bulldog for the Intercontinental Championship in the 1992 SummerSlam, which was the main event and, quite frankly, was the match that stole the show. It's a pity that... Bulldog didn't get a longer title reign because he ended up losing it to Sean. And I believe the deal, and this was what I've heard, I swear at one point I believe Sean was supposed to win it from Brett, but I think Brett didn't want to do the job. And he ended up going to England and dropped it to Davey, and then Davey had to do it instead. Somewhere around about that. I might be wrong about that, but that's what I heard anyway. Okay, that's not necessarily accurate, guys, before you start busting my balls. But all in all, that, you know, being number one, I agree with it. No question about it. I agree with it. So that about wraps it up for this podcast, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed Hope you guys have enjoyed the podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed SummerSlam Week here on the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Tune in this week, guys. I'll have a very special Wrestling Matters Podcast episode 125 extra this week. I'm not going to do it on the show today. I don't know if I've done it. I'll check it out during the week, and if I've and if I have done it, I won't do it. But if I have done it, I'll do it exclusive to the channel, and that is ten things WWE wants you to forget about SummerSlam. I don't think I've done that yet. I'll double check it, but I'll do that this week on the channel. So look out for that. That'll be coming 
this week on the Wrestling Madness channel. So, until next time, guys, episode 126. Be sure to check out the Wrestling Madness podcast extra show this week on the Wrestling Madness channel, youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Madness, and subscribe for more podcasts on that channel as well. But until next time, guys, episode 126. My name is Anthony Walker, Wrestling Matters, and enjoy the rest of the week. Peace out. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold Simpson.